Hello YouTube. Now, don't leave. <laughs> I know what many of you are already thinking. The title of this video is pretty inflammatory. I mean, Tesla is the next Enron? Elon Musk is a fraud? It's a little unbelievable. And in fact, I remember vividly last January when my brother called me and said, hey, I want you to know I'm betting big against Tesla. You should do the same. And I said back, no way. That's crazy. I would never bet against Elon Musk. And then I started digging. Now, here we are in August, and I feel quite confident in saying that Tesla might actually be the next Enron. Before I continue, I want to say two really important things. First, everything in this video is just a theory and my opinion. Nothing stated as fact should be taken as fact. I just want to make sure that this story, and it is a story, gets out there because I've been worried about friends and family who are invested in Tesla. I've altered my voice for reasons that will become apparent later in this video. Second, I want to give a summary of the story. So here it goes. Elon Musk gave guidance of 5,000 Model 3s per week by the end of 2017 from May to August 2017. That guidance enabled them to raise $1.8 billion in August 2017 in debt financing. The SEC, Wall Street Journal, and shareholders all discovered that this guidance was reckless and materially wrong over the course of Q3 and Q4 2017. The SEC put Tesla under enforcement action until they were able to demonstrate a reasonable path to 5,000 cars per week on current capital allocations. Tesla scrambled to try to achieve this in late June and sustain it through July, but the SEC hasn't bitten because the cars aren't functional or the demand isn't there, or both. This story could start in many places, but I'm going to start on May 3rd, 2017 with Tesla's Q1 2017 conference call. I'm Tyler Frank with Robert Bayer. Jason, question. Um, can you walk me through what your capital needs are for the Model 3 just to get to production and then to ramp production uh, throughout this year and next year? Uh, and then how confident are you that you might be able to hit that 100,000 100,000 unit production target for the Model 3 in this year? And then I have a, a follow-up after that. No, I don't think we have indicated the – we've just said in the letter we'd achieve 5,000 per week at some point yeah. this year and 10,000 at some point next year. So we haven't clarified on that. Um, Did you catch that? That was Deepak Ahuja, Tesla's CFO, saying that Tesla was on track to make 5,000 Model 3s per week by the end of 2017. He and Elon also say moments later that they won't need to raise capital and it will be funded internally, which turns out to be false. But that 5,000 per week number is a really important number and one that this video is going to talk about a lot. Elon Musk reiterated it in a tweet on July 2nd, 2017, when he said, looks like we're on track to make 20,000 Model 3s in December. A few weeks later, on August 7th, Moody's, a credit rating agency, gave Tesla a pretty decent credit rating. This credit rating played an important role in enabling Tesla to raise $1.8 billion over the course of August. Tesla reiterated this guidance in their Q2 2017 investor update letter, and Elon Musk also reiterated it on the Q2 investor call. Um, and we, we remain, uh, we believe, on track to achieve a 5,000 unit week by the end of this year. Um, Here's the problem. Tesla had no chance at making 5,000 Model 3s per week in 2017. It turns out that Instead of 20,000 Model 3s in December, Tesla made only 1,550 in the entire quarter. On October 3rd, the Wall Street Journal published a report saying that as early as September, Tesla was still making Model 3s by hand. And on October 11th, Tesla shareholders filed a class action lawsuit with some explosive claims. I highly recommend you read this lawsuit in its entirety, but here are some of the juiciest allegations. First, it says a former director of manufacturing told Tesla there was zero chance of mass producing the Model 3, and outlined his reasoning in detail and in writing while at Tesla. Another former employee made similar allegations. And then a production employee said that on October 18, 
2017, they had still never seen a single Model 3 being constructed on the assembly line. Another former employee says that Tesla was constructing Model 3s mostly by hand in June 2017. And this employee claims his supervisor told him that the automated line was due in 2018. In total, this lawsuit has more than six former employees who can credibly say that the Model 3 had no shot at mass production in 2017. Recently, the Wall Street Journal published a report with one really important quote. The Securities and Exchange Commission was investigating this last year. According to this report, the SEC sent subpoenas to a Tesla supplier asking for information about the Model 3 production ramp. Tesla has a history of not disclosing SEC investigations. Probe's reporter filed Freedom of Information Act requests, and they were denied because, quote, it could reasonably be expected to interfere with enforcement activities. They warned that this is indicative of a company that has undisclosed investigations. Why would the SEC do this? Well, because all signs point to Tesla lying to investors. With heavy machinery and equipment, orders take years. There's a lengthy design and specification process, then a lengthy build process, and then a lengthy deliver and test process. The question the SEC was asking was, did Tesla order the parts? Elon said in August they were on track to make 5,000 vehicles per week by the end of 2017. Had Tesla ordered the required equipment by that point? Had suppliers agreed that they could make this timeline? If they hadn't, isn't that fraud? They raised $1.8 billion off guidance that was recklessly and materially false. But anyways, jumping ahead to 2018, things start to shift. Tesla updates its production timelines to 5000 a week by the end of the second quarter, six months behind schedule. Around the time that Moody's would start asking questions to update its guidance, Tesla's chief accounting officer, head of sales, and corporate controller all abruptly resigned. Another odd thing starts to happen around this time frame. Tesla begins to fall behind on parts. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of reports of customers waiting for parts in order for their Teslas to be repaired. Reports start to surface of people waiting months for parts, and Tesla service centers began running out of loaner vehicles. Twitter has done a great job of aggregating these reports, but you can call any national auto mechanics like Macau or Service King. Many managers are happy to complain about the Teslas sitting in their shops. And this problem isn't specific to the United States. In Norway, one of Tesla's most dominant markets, Tesla rose to become the fourth most complained about company because of its lack of ability to repair cars, according to the Norwegian Consumer Council. Another odd thing starts to kind of come into light during the first quarter of 2018. There haven't been any executive insider sales in a long time. For a company valued over $50 billion, you'd expect that some of these officers would diversify. We're here in August now, and I still don't think there have been any SEC Form 4s filed in over a year. Moody's downgraded Tesla on March 27th and gave a negative outlook. Given that their previous guidance was dependent on 5,000 Model 3s per week in early 2018, this really wasn't all that surprising. But this is where things get weird. Moody's guidance says that they believe it likely that Tesla will undertake a large near-term capital raise in 2018. And some Wall Street analysts agreed with this. And this is reasonable. At, at this point, Tesla is at negative 2.2 billion working capital. They're starting to be in financial distress. But shortly after, Musk's demeanor begins to shift. In early April, Musk makes a famous tweet to respond to The Economist. Tesla will be profitable and cash flow positive in Q3 and Q4. Strangely, this tweet never received an 8K. In hindsight, it feels like another lie he doubled down on. It also appears to be a turning point for his management, something that accelerated a long list of executive departures. In April, he started to send aggressive company-wide emails, threatening both suppliers and contractors and scolding employees for poor meeting culture. He said that every expense over $1 million would need to be personally approved by him, which was surprising given that Tesla had over $2.6 billion in the bank and Elon Musk was CEO of four different companies, SpaceX, Neuralink, The Boring Company, and Tesla. In May, Elon's Twitter activity started to significantly increase. 
In my opinion, he began flirting with the boundaries of securities law by directly taunting short sellers. And then we get to the infamous Q1 conference call. On this call, Elon Musk shut down analysts who were asking legitimate questions about capital requirements and Model 3 demand. Questions he was happy to answer just one year prior. Sorry. These, these questions are so dry. <laughs> They're killing me. Let me make a federal case out of it. Next. Boring bonehead questions are not cool. Next. I think that if people are concerned about volatility, they should definitely not buy our stock. I am not here to convince you to buy our stock. He also insisted that he did not want to raise capital. Thank you. Our next question comes from Adam Jonas with Morgan Stanley. Uh, thanks, uh, Elon. Uh, so you repeatedly said, uh, I think in recent weeks, that you do not need to issue equity capital at Tesla. And I think many investors on this call would say it's better to raise capital when you don't need to. So I guess the first question is, um, yeah, you may not need to, but do you want to? No. I specifically, okay. I specifically don't want to. Perfect. Okay. Um. And he took questions from a YouTuber for over 20 minutes. So I'm also wondering, are you guys going to let Porsche beat you to market with a 350 kilowatt hour supercharger? Because I know you've mentioned, I know, I, I, you know, I, I, B3. Going, questions are not boring. For a CEO of a $50 billion company, this behavior is simply astonishing. And it doesn't stop there. Also on the Q1 call, Musk makes an ominous reference to an upcoming restructure. At this point, his team must know that it's likely they're going to be laying off 9% of their workforce in June. Elon Musk also buys millions of dollars worth of shares. Pre-market. A great Twitter sleuth pieces this one together. What was he doing? Elon Musk already has over $10 billion in equity value in Tesla at this point. What is he doing screwing around with a few million more in pre-market transactions? It's also a strong indicator to shorts that he's not sitting on any material information at this point, otherwise he would be committing insider trading. So to recap, it's the end of May. Tesla is saying they will not do a capital raise and they've been saying that for two months. Their credit rating has been downgraded with negative outlook. There are hints of financial distress. They're on track to lose $700 million again in Q2. So the big million dollar question is, why isn't Tesla raising? And my opinion is they can't, they couldn't. They can't because they've committed fraud. Over the course of the second quarter, despite saying they produced 2,500 in burst production at the end of Q1, they only deliver 18,440 Model 3s, averaging 1,400 a week or 1,600 per week when you take out the factory shutdowns. That's well below their own Q1 guidance of 2,500 per week. So at this point, they're still months behind. What happens next? Well, Elon becomes a lot more erratic. He fights with journalists on Twitter, making baseless accusations. He calls the hero of the Thailand soccer team rescue a pedophile and then deletes the tweet. He continues to taunt shorts. His Twitter use remains extremely high. He also attacks a prominent short seller who was writing under the alias of Montana Skeptic. Elon Musk called this person's boss and forced them to cease writing about Tesla. Montana Skeptic ended up deleting his Twitter account. Does this sound like Jeff Skilling go after, going after shorts yet? I mean, this is why I'm using a voice modifier. Tesla, however, seems to be doing all right over the summer. They built a tent to start manufacturing, which is highly unconventional. But Tesla does come out on July 2nd and say that they produced 5,031 Model 3s in the last week of June, doubling their burst production. And it actually starts to look like this production capacity is sustained. Even shorts on Twitter are pointing out that the Model 3s leaving the factory seems like this might be legitimate. Other evidence of this production potentially being legit, Inside EV's scorecard estimated 14,250 deliveries in July, a 3x or so step up over June, and there was a notable uptick on social media monitors. I've also anecdotally living in Chicago have seen a lot more Model 3s around. However, there's a big problem, two in fact, one in Lathrop, California and one in Burbank, California. 
These two lots were discovered around mid-July, and they appear to have thousands of Model 3s sitting on them. 3,000 or so are visible from the outside in Lathrop, and another 1,000 are visible in Burbank. And that's just what's visible on the outside. These buildings in Lathrop could house many more. After almost three weeks of aerial monitoring, most of the cars just didn't move, several of which started gathering dust. There just wasn't enough turnover. There was also a huge uptick of delivery delay reports. Customers began having horrific delivery experiences where their car just didn't show up or showed up very damaged. Oh, and did I mention that Tesla's head of worldwide service and customer experience left right here, along with dozens of other executives? Shorts have continued to be skeptical of Tesla's Model 3 production, but are more skeptical of their deliveries. We can't figure out why so many customers are having poor delivery experiences and why so many are experiencing delays. Some fully paid for their car weeks ago and are still waiting on delivery. Oh, another funny anecdote from the shorts. Tesla Motors Club is a, an online forum for fans and they do a survey of their owners. 64% reported having a defect in their first 30 days. 51% had a service visit in their first 30 days. And there are only 75 service centers in the United States. Remember, this is a survey of the most hardcore Tesla fans. Oh, and by the way, New York Tesla Model 3 registrations are public and are also down. So what does all this mean before we go into August here? I'm going to go back to my story. Elon Musk gave guidance of 5,000 Model 3s per week by the end of 2017. That guidance enabled them to raise $1.8 billion in August 2017. The SEC, Wall Street Journal, shareholders, and Moody's all found out that this guidance was reckless and materially wrong. The SEC put Tesla under enforcement action until they were able to demonstrate a reasonable path to 5,000 cars per week and Tesla has been scrambling to try to achieve this since late June and sustain it through July and August. The SEC hasn't bitten because these cars aren't functional or the demand isn't there or both. So now we're in August and now we get to try to explain Elon Musk's recent behavior. And my explanation is he is in meltdown mode. We are looking at imminent bankruptcy. He is grasping for anything that could save his company and the truth is, there is nothing. Tesla is at negative 2.4 billion working capital. They have a current budget shortfall of $3.6 billion when you consider their committed capex of $1.2 billion over the next six months. On the Q2 call, Deepak refused to say anything about July's cash flows. And for a company that's trying to become cash flow positive, you know, July kind of would have been the first month to do that. Uh, so Deepak. So after July here, um, how close are you to uh, cash flow positive? So your question is after July, how close are we to cash flow so, positive? Yeah, you have you have July you have July under the books here. So how close are you to? Yeah, cash well, flow we positive? don't have. Um, I mean, it's always fun. One, we don't have July results done, but. To, um, it, it doesn't matter exactly where we are in um, in the month of July. Uh, what really matters is over the quarter uh, because uh, it depends on deliveries, depends on production, many, many factors. So um, we will be significantly cash flow positive for the quarter. Um, I think that's what really matters. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's like the, the larger question is like, uh, do we have like a low balance in the bank? The answer is, no, we, 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 we And here's the real problem. Let's just say that Tesla was going to be profitable in Q3 and Q4, which they won't, but let's say they were. They still wouldn't have enough money to fund all of their projects. I mean, just look at this list. The Semi, the Roadster, the Model Y, the pickup truck, the solar roof, the Shanghai factory, the Germany factory. All of these projects require billions of dollars to get off the ground. And yet, Elon Musk still refuses to raise capital. Thank you for taking my question. Um, and I appreciate all the color you've been providing. Wanted to dig a little bit deeper, though, in terms of um, capital spending plans. 
Considering the growth you've identified in China with the Model Y, we believe also in the EU, it's been discussed about a factory there. How do you plan to fund all of this growth without going back to the capital markets to raise funds? And can you verify for us whether or not there is a notice from a regulator that would prevent you from raising outside capital? Thanks. Uh, we do not uh, – we, 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 will, we will not be raising any equity uh, at any point. Uh, at least that's – I have no expectation of doing so. I do not plan to do so. Uh, for China, uh, I think we uh, our default plan will be to uh, use a, essentially a loan from um, the local banks in, in China. Um, and and fund uh, the uh, gig, the gig factory in Shanghai with uh, uh, local debt essentially, um, and um, we, we certainly certainly could raise money, but I think we do need to, and uh, we uh, yeah we, we, yeah I think it's better to it, it is better discipline not to. Yeah, we are executing on an operating plan that um, keeps us sufficiently self-funded despite our CapEx needs and our uh, debt that's maturing and still keep a very healthy balance uh, on our balance sheet. Yeah. Um, we, we, our, our default plan is we, we, we pay, we, we start paying off our debts. Um, and I don't mean re refining them, I mean paying them off. For example, the, there's a Convert that's coming due soon, a couple hundred million. Then there's a 900 million one in February or something like that. We expect to pay that off with internally generated cash flow. We'd still be, uh, still have a healthy cash balance. Yeah. And, and to answer the other question, there is no such notice from a regulator. Oh yeah, the, yeah. I'm not sure what you're talking about, but there is no such notice from a regulator. Very good. I think Elon Musk was lying. I'm not sure why Elon and Deepak waffled on that question, but I think Elon was lying. The Wall Street Journal reported that the SEC was investigating Tesla before that conference call. They've sent subpoenas to Elon, Tesla, and the Tesla Board of Directors. They did it very quickly. Business Insider also released a damning report saying that 4,300 of the 5,000 Model 3s produced in the last week of June had to be reworked, calling into question if they were truly produced or not. Elon's going private fiasco? Just another lie. There is no buyer here. Buying out equity shareholders would take tens of billions of dollars, and then you'd need to spend 10 billion more to pay off Tesla's immense debts. With that kind of money, you could just buy Ford or GM, both of which make over 6 million cars per year, compared to Tesla's 200,000. Going private at $420 per share? That would be a historic transaction. So why hasn't anyone stood up and claimed credit for spearheading it? Another dubious claim of Elon's going private is that he wants to retain control and position as CEO with no majority owner. But just look at the reality of his company. Turning around Tesla demands exceptional management. They have lost hundreds of millions of dollars each quarter for the past three quarters. And Elon Musk is just not an exceptional manager. Just go read the internal emails that leak. He's no Jack Welch or Jeff Bezos or Reed Hastings. He's been CEO for over 10 years now and his company has only grown losses. You might think Elon to be a much needed visionary or a brilliant engineer, but few respect him as a capable manager of over 30,000 people. Who is going to sign up to buy this company to bet on Elon's management? The reality here is the funding was never secured. There is no buyer. This was just another impulsive tweet that was uninformed. This is a last dish effort to go private, to save his reputation, to save the company that is destined now for chapter 11 because of these SEC investigations. Oh, and Model 3 production has slowed to a crawl since last week. Business Insider reports that workers are being sent home early. Twitter scouts have been seeing a massive drop-off in activity at the Tesla factory. My take on all of this? Elon Musk is on the way out. 
the board has no choice but to get rid of him. And in doing that, they will have to make the hard decisions that Elon couldn't make. File for Chapter 11 and restructure to become the niche automaker that they should have been. There are so many other things I could talk about in this video. I could talk about how Tesla is way behind in the autonomous vehicles race. I mean, didn't Elon say they'd have a cross-country road trip in 2017? And didn't he promise a safety report on the Q1 call by Q2? Funny how they spent a lot of time talking about safety features, but didn't release the safety report. I could also talk about Tesla's fraud with Solar City and the Solar City lawsuit and how the solar roof was faked and how Reuters reported there were only 12 solar roof installations in California. We're here two years later. Or I could talk about Musk's girlfriend and Azalea Banks and that whole fiasco. But instead, I'm going to end with a big warning. Tesla is going bankrupt. The clock is almost out. They need cash in the bank to fulfill huge debt obligations before the end of December. Cash they don't and won't have. They will burn at minimum $300 million this quarter, and in doing so, they will burn the last shred of hope that serious investors have in this company. Institutions are already tiptoeing to the exit. I feel sad for all the pain that's about to come. This really does seem like the next Enron.